I received a package recently containing this box, and inside was this Commodore US-10 calculator, made in the USA somewhere around 1972. The US-10 is a relatively simple 10-digit calculator, with full floating point capability and a constant function. It features a rather nice panoplex style gas discharge display and good solid keys. My example came complete with its user manual and a rather crude and shabby dust cover. And now I'll just step into my time machine for a bit. So now we skip back in time to when the calculator first arrived. A previous owner had stuck some masking tape on the top marked with the conversion from feet to metres and vice versa so presumably they used these conversions on a regular basis. Every time I move the calculator, this black debris falls out of it, which looks like decomposed foam, so I'll need to open it up and remove said foam, replacing it if needed. The information plate on the underside shows the voltage of 115 volts, so I'll need to use my step-down transformer. Over on the right hand side the serial number is 22995-10, the 10 to show that it's a US 10 calculator, but the pre-printed model number is US 8. In fact the 8 had a blob of black paint covering it, which just came off when I rubbed my finger over it. A quick look at the manual and it shows a US 8, which someone has crossed out and written US 10 and there was this little card in with it saying the US 10 calculator has a 10 digit capacity however the operation and functions are identical to the US 8 calculator illustrated in this instruction book so they clearly didn't bother updating the manual or the plate for this calculator. Slightly more alarming the 2 pin US plug on the calculator came with this adapter attached which converts it to a UK 2 pin plug does that mean someone has plugged the calculator into a 240 volt UK supply and already fried the electronics? I guess only time will tell. I think I'll open it up and take a peek inside. I have already tried the calculator on 115 volts and it's as dead as a dead thing, but at least no smoke came out. Ok we're in, and as expected there's decomposed foam everywhere so I'll need to clean that out. Eek. It's stuck to my tweezers. Get off, get off, get off, get off! Right, where was I? Ah yes, the fuse holder appears to be somewhat corroded, so that will need a clean, although I've checked it for continuity and it's actually working ok. All these connections, which appear to be for the Panaplex display, look like they might have been resoldered, along with the wires to the transformer. There's a suspiciously large amount of flux residue compared to the rest of the board. I've set the camera to a different angle and just look at the length of the protruding legs on all those components. I've never seen anything like it. And that appears to be as original. Most unusual. Also there's a note taped to the inside of the case saying transistor nearest to the transformer was originally 2N2410 so clearly there's been some work done on this calculator in the past. Right, we've unsoldered the wires from the transformer to make it easier to clean up the board. Now to get rid of all this horrible decomposed foam that's everywhere. It's probably here to prevent dust and dirt getting into the calculator through the keyboard, but I think I can manage without it. Interestingly enough, when unsoldering the transformer wires, my brother, who did the unsoldering, spotted that there was a short between the pin here and the neighbouring track. I'd already spotted one of the pads on the replaced transistor had pulled off the board and wasn't making contact anymore. We also found another short between two pins on the Panaplex display. And the bridge rectifier looks like it's been resoldered at some point too. So all in all the calculator was never going to work as it was, and unless I'm very lucky it will already have fried the chip, but we'll have to wait and see. I forgot to film this bit earlier, but the calculator is based around a Texas Instruments TMS 0106 NC chip, which, if I'm reading the date code correctly, was made in July 1972, so the calculator would date from some time after that. 
OK, that's all the obvious faults repaired and the calculator back together. Now to try it again. It will do one of three things. A. It will work. B. It won't work. Or C. It'll explode. My prediction is that it won't work. Clearly, you'll all be hoping that we get an electroboom moment and the thing explodes. But personally, I hope it doesn't. So, here goes. I win. Nothing. Although I can hear the transformer loading up when I turn it on, as if it's coming up against some resistance. More testing required, I think. Update time. Now this is weird. I had the calculator apart to test some voltages, and I wasn't reading minus 15 volts where I should have been. I tried it a few times, turning it off between tests. Then all of a sudden I noticed the transformer no longer sounded like it was working hard and I had minus 15 volts just where it should have been. So I flipped the calculator over and bingo, it's working. I have no explanation for this. Some of the keys aren't working very well, so the next thing to do is to clean all of them. Possibly even more strange, the 8-bit guy did a video on the Commodore US8 calculator, which is basically the same as this, only with two less digits. And his calculator did exactly the same thing. It just suddenly started working. I'll put a link to his video down in the description. Anyway, now to clean the key contacts. It's a little fiddly, but using a combination of a screwdriver and a spudger, I can carefully prise the top off each key. Going in from the bottom isn't a good idea. It looks like someone has tried that on the zero key, breaking the plastic welded legs in the process, so I've had to fix that as well as I could. So that's the top off. Then the plunger lifts out, followed by the spring, which is also stuffed full of decomposed foam. This presumably had some sort of damping effect, but I'll see if I can manage without it. Lastly, I can carefully lift out the moving contact, which is basically a dished piece of metal that makes contact with the centre pip when you press a key. I'll clean the contacts in the base of the switch with IPA on a cotton bird. It looks like the decomposed foam is hygroscopic because everywhere it lands it causes corrosion. So I'll just clean it as well as I can, but it won't be perfect. That should probably do. Then carefully drop the moving contact back in, dished side upwards, followed by the spring and the plunger, and finally the top piece. Only another 17 to do. That took a long time but at least this is the last one, and then I can test the calculator again. The springs have a partially closed loop on the bottom end. This may or may not be important, but I've kept them all the same way just in case. Be careful not to stress the circuit board when you squeeze the top back on, and I would always recommend wearing an anti-static strap when working on electronics, so you don't inadvertently fry any chips. I might pop these capacitors out at some time and check them. The wrap has shrunk on them all, which may be just ageing, or maybe that they're getting hot, and were part of the problem with the calculator not starting initially. I'll mark the position of the sleeves for the time being, so I can see if they shrink any more. OK, back together. Will it work? And will the keys work? That's a good start. And that's also looking pretty good. Next to do a quick demo and then we're done. Addition and subtraction are done using the fairly standard adding machine method. So if I enter 123 plus and 456 and press plus again, which is also equals, we get the answer of 579. Then if I want to subtract 500, I enter 500 and press the minus equals key to get the answer of 79. The C key clears the register ready for the next calculation. So we'll go for 3285 times 7 and press the plus equals key to show the answer of 22,995. And that number is added to the register, so if I want to add another 15 to that, I simply key in 15 and press the plus equals again. 
to get the answer of 23,010. If I want to multiply by a minus value, I simply press the minus key after whichever number has the minus value. So, 12 minus times 56 followed by plus and equals to give the answer of minus 672. The minus is all the way over to the side here. Division is the same, so we'll go for 1974 divided by 47. And the answer is, of course, 42. We're in floating point mode at the moment, but you can change that to 2, 3 and 4 decimal places using this slider switch. I'll set it to 3 places for now and enter the usual 355 divided by 113, giving us an approximation of pi rounded to 3 decimal places. There's a constant function, so if I latch down the K key and multiply our last result by the diameter of a circle, say 12 inches, and press equals, we get the circumference of 37.704 inches. The value of 3.142 and the multiply function are now locked as the constant, and I can repeat the calculation for other diameters say 8 inches, and press equals, which gives us a circumference of 25.136 inches. If I want to change the constant, I can simply key in my next calculation in full. We'll go for division this time. So if I want to find out what 108 pounds is in kilograms, I can enter 108 divided by 2.205 and press equals, to get the answer of 48.98 kilograms. This time, divided by 2.205 is held as the constant, and I can repeat this with another weight, say 88 pounds, and press equals, to give the answer of 39.91 kilograms. If I enter more than the 10 digit capacity of the calculator, it shows an overflow with the letter C on the left hand side of the display. If I now press the minus key, it adds the minus sign to show that it's an underflow rather than an overflow. If I multiply a large number by another number that overflows the register, we'll go for 12345678900 times 456 and press equals. It shows the U sign over on the left hand side of the display to indicate an overflow. But it hasn't just given up. It shows us the answer as far as it can. You just need to move the decimal point 10 places to the right. So that's 562 billion 962,957,800. It's just lost the last two places, which should be a 4 and a 0. If I repeat that, but this time use the minus equals key, in other words it's multiplied by minus 456, it shows a minus underflow in the form of a U with a minus sign above it, making it look like a square. I rather like this little calculator. It performs really well, it looks great, the keyboard is nice to use, and these gas discharge displays are just that bit nicer than the old LED displays. Anyway, that'll do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.